So today we will continue and hopefully finish the chapter uh, that deals with special mediums. It's um, chapter 16. And I just want to read again the very first um, paragraph of this chapter when Kardec says on item 185, besides the mediumistic categories already in, enumerated, mediumship offers infinite varieties that include what may be called special mediums, those gifted with is still undefined particular aptitudes apart from the qualities and knowledge of the manifest spirit. So again, just to recap in this chapter of here, Kardec is first of all, in the very the beginning, make a very humbled observation that there's a lot of phenomena out there that we don't understand well. There's a lot of phenomena over there that perhaps we have not even seen yet. There's a lots of phenomena out there that we see, but it doesn't fit in the little boxes that we create for didactics. And as we read here, uh, those boxes have a very um, loose um, boundaries, meaning that uh, the aptitudes of the media may mingle, may go into different boxes as well. Uh, and what he calls the uh, special mediums is the ones that when he uh, does his analysis does not fit in one or another, or perhaps he fits in two or three at the same time. And being able to say there's a lot of stuff for us to recognize, to understand. And our little boxes over here is only uh, a di didactic tool that we have to be very careful when we qualify, so to say, and put mediums in one or another boxes. And there are some that we are not, not gonna fit in none of those boxes. And again, those boxes that are very loose, very loose boundaries, okay? That's very important. Okay. Synoptic table of the different varieties of mediums, 187. We may divide mediums into two large categories, physical effects mediums, those who have the power to induce physical effects or extensive manifestations, intellectual effect mediums, those who are more especially able to receive and transmit intelligent communications. All the other varieties may be directly linked in various degrees to one or the other of these two categories and a few fit into both. But analyzing the various phenomena produced under mediumistic influence, we see that all of them include a physical effect of some kind and that such effects almost always appear along with an intelligent effect of some kind. It is sometimes difficult to establish a dividing line between both categories, but this does not present a serious problem. In the classification of intellectual effect mediums, we have included those who can more especially serve as intermediary instruments for regular and continuous communications. Thanks. So if, again, for that datex, we're going to divide a group of mediums and we're going to create two big uh, divisions that is um, a little more clear for us. There are those of physical effects, those who produces the physical phenomena, those who produces the, the, the phenomena that everyone witness, everyone sees it's happening, being a medium or not a medium. And in that group of the physical effects, we're gonna just make one big division of those who are completely aware of it and those who are not aware of it. Those who are donators of the elements necessary for the, the physical effects to take place, very aware of it, concentrate, put themselves in a position of being a servant. And those who are, have no idea that they have that capability. 
and it still serves as a medium, it still serves as a donator of uh, the necessary elements for that uh, phenomenon to take place. In a way, uh, we can say that uh, in comparison with the physical effects, the, the, with the effect, I'm sorry, with intelligent effects, they will be more passive uh, mediums. The, is it important? Yes. Um, usually the spirit is going to make use of uh, mediums of physical effect are not the most uh, elevated spirits because those spirits will have a more ethereal, a more e spiritualized uh, petty spirit, which makes it very difficult for them to associate with more gross dense matter, such as ectoplasm. Does it devalue those, those mediums or those phenomena? Absolutely not. Okay, uh, imagine that physical phenomena that is used in, 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 um, in spiritual surgeries in treatment of individuals over here. So there's a tremendous amount of value, okay? Uh, we're not making a differentiate in, in, in value over here, okay? But the spirits uh, who will perform those very valuable things are not the most elevated spirits. They still have a more dense pet spirits that can associate it, associate with more dense matter, just a matter of uh, affinity, right? Of the, those, of the, of the pet spirit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the group of the intellectual spirits, are the one that connect. Uh, like the way he puts over here, include those who can more specifically serve as intermediary uh, for regular and communications and continuous communications. So that, of course, it's not talking about the ones that are able to produce the effects of psychography or psychophony, the ones who can uh, be used for uh, allow a spirit, let's say, to play an instrument, which is different to that the physical phenomena, okay, uh, uh, of um, doing things that the general population cannot perceive, such as the physical phenomena. Mm. <clears throat> okay, but again, important, we're not Talking about make a difference in terms of value or quality of work, the quality of work and the value is, um, it has to be considered for each case in specific, okay? If you don't have any, um, let's say, if you're not pregnant, you don't need an obstetrician. Obstetrician has no value for you if you're not pregnant, mm. period. But if you are pregnant, the obstetrician is a very, important person in your life. It has all the values. So you're gonna say that the, the, the obstetric has no value just because I'm not pregnant. No, it's very important because somebody out there is, is pregnant and needs an obstetrician, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So everything has equal value. It just varies in, in situation to situation. Mm -hmm. So the physical phenomena has value, has equal value, is important. In, in a different kind of scenario, in, in scenarios in different situations. The fact that it's performing for a not highly evolved spirit doesn't mean anything because very often uh, those spirits performing it are under the guidance of a highly evolved spirit. Okay, questions, comments, we move on. So what Kazakh is going to give us here now is uh, a variety of um, common types of, of medium chips. Um, it's really a recap of things that I've seen so far. Okay, and you see over here that Personally, I think Kardec uh, gets very particular and, and make the subdivision of the subdivision of the subdivision. It's almost going like 
from the body to the cell, you know, it's going from the from the body to the system to the organ to the tissues mm -hmm. to the cells. You know, it really try to break down, break down, break down, break down to the minuscule subdivisions of the subdivisions here, in my personal opinion. Okay. 188, varieties common to all types of mediumship. Sensitive mediums, individuals who are susceptible to sensing the presence of spirits through a general or localized vague or physical sensation. Most of them distinguish between good and evil spirits by the nature of the resultant sensation. Due to the resultant fatigue, delicate and overly sensitive mediums must, must abstain from communicating with violent spirits or those who cause a feeling of tiredness. Natural or unconscious mediums, those who induce phenomena spontaneously without the intervention of their own will, and most of the time without even being aware of it. Facultative or voluntary mediums, those who have the ability to induce phenomenon through an act of their own will. As great as this will may be, this can do nothing if the spirits refuse to come, which proves the intervention of an exterior power. Thanks. So we the sensitive mediums, very common. It may even fall in the category that we are all mediums because we all have the ability of sense the energies on one environment. We may sense the, the good, pleasant feeling of being in a place or the opposite may have a disagreeable feeling in a, in in a, in another place. Um, all of us have that ability. Um, some of us have to the point of the cardiac we call a medium, because that perception is a lot more extensive than the most of us. Someone who you get inside an elevator, there is only one person in there, and this person who, who does not have claustrophobia, okay, we just cannot stand. They're supposed to go to the to the 18th floor, but it change your mind and get off on the second floor because the energy is so difficult, it's so dense that it cannot tolerate staying in that elevator for whatever reason. Okay, very often these are sensitive mediums would have that perception, uh, some individuals. I uh, have no problem going in in, um, in a cemetery. Some people go to the cemetery and kind of feel a little chilly, thing or there, but it's no problem. Some people cannot go. Some people just feel mm. all the energies, the good and the bad is such a pupuri, it's a fruit cocktail of, of, of emotions and sensations as individuals feel that they cannot uh, go. This has been reported. What is it? This likely is what Kardec could call over here of the sensitive mediums. They are very sensitive to the energies that spirits carry with them. Those who are happy, they will feel that good, pleasant sensation. Those who are unhappy, they will feel that unhappy, uh, disagreeable sensations as well. Um, the the natural one unconscious and the facultative or voluntary applies mostly for physical phenomena, you know, as the ones who um, are producing uh, or donating um, ectoplasm without even not knowing that they have that ability. Okay. And <clears throat> the ones who will go to a session, aware of their ability, aware of their faculty, place, this, place themselves in a state of uh, mediumistic trance and donate the ectoplasm, being still passive, but more active because it's aware of it, 
because it is using its, its own element in terms of meditation, of donating good vibrations for some kind of work. This work specifically, let's say, for uh, centers that still do works of uh, spiritual treatment, spiritual surgeries, healings, and kinds of things. And very often is a physical phenomena, and very often has a medium of physical phenomena who is aware of it. Okay, and you see Kardec places those three together, not by chance, because maybe there is this um, uh, natural or un unconscious mediums who does have the sensitivity. It, it, it feels that something is happening, but can I explain, doesn't know what's, what's going on. Question, mm -hmm. comments? Again, this is mostly a recap, so um, we can just move on. Okay. 189, special physical effects varieties, type teleological mediums, those through whose influence noises and raps are produced, a common variety in which the mediums will may or may not participate. Motor mediums, those who induce inert objects to move, very common. Mediums for displacements and suspensions, those who induce the displacement of inert objects or the suspension in the air without any point of support. They are more or less rare, depending on the intensity of the phenomenon they can precipitate. They are also some who can levitate, but they are rarer still. Musical effects mediums, those who induce the playing of musical instruments without contact, very rare. Mediums for apparitions, those who induce fluidic or tangible apparitions that are visible to those watching, very rare. Mediums for apportations, those who serve spirits for the carrying of physical objects, a variety of motor and displacement medium, exceptional. Nocturial mediums, those who obtain- Nocturnal. Nocturnal, yeah. Nocturnal mediums, those who obtain certain physical effects in darkness. Following is a spirit's response about whether or not these mediums may be regarded as a separate variety. Certainly these mediums may re represent a specialty but the phenomenon is due more to the environmental conditions than to the nature of the medium or spirit. I should add that some mediums escape this particular influence of the environment and that with a little practice in most nocturnal mediums could produce the phenomenon in both light and darkness. This variety of medium is not very common and we must make it clear that it is due to this requirement for darkness that allows for the complete freedom to employ trickery, ventricul ventriculism, and acoustic tubes by which charlatans have frequently duped the credulous by passing themselves off as mediums in order to get money. But it does not matter. Tricksters in rooms like tricksters in public squares will be cruelly unmasked and the spirits will show them that they do wrong in interfering in their work. Yes, I repeat, certain charlatans should be openly and very rudely exposed so that their role as fake mediums will end. It is only a matter of time, Erastus. Thanks, let's stop here so it's mm -hmm. too many. So do you see here why that I think that Kardec really go breaking everything up to the to the cell level, so to say. It tries to really divide everything in many different ways. And he's talking about physical phenomena. So uh, typological mediums, the ones that produce the typology, the, the taps, the wraps, the little uh, noises, in wood, usually in wood, most often in wood. Sometimes the wood seems to be the wood at the top of the wood. Seems, sometimes seems to be from inside of the wood, but <clears throat> it's still a physical phenomenon. It's still the, the little tips, wraps on, on 
on our inert material, usually a piece of wood. And then it breaks down all the mirrors that produces phenomenon of moving of element of our inert, inert uh, matter. Modern mediums, mediums for displacement and suspensions. Why do you make a differenti differentiation here? More of those who induce inert object, who induce inert, inert object to move, very common. Uh, displacement, isn't displacement make it move? What is the differentiation here? The biggest differentiation here is that uh, model at least not, doesn't say over here, defies gravity on the one of the mediums or displacement, uh, displacement suspension that is a defiance of gravity. There's levitation associated to it. But Kardec was only like picking little things to create those divisions and ability of mediums. Can a medium that um, perform typology also be a medium that does the, the, the displacement suspension? Very possible, very likely. It's, it's still a donator of, of ectoplasm. Uh, mus uh, a musical, musical effect mediums, those who uh, donate, donate ectoplasm so spirits can play an instrument. Uh, mediums of apparitions were able to perform uh, the apparition of, of spirits in, a, in an environment in which everyone will hear, will see it. So let's say that um, Emmanuel shows up in, in our meeting and you know, with his clothes, the traditional Roman clothes that he used to wear with all the things and everybody sees, that's a physical phenomenon. So though there is a medium there or around there, who is, pro is capable to provide ectoplasm for this kind of phenomena. And mediums, as we spoke last week, have a tendency to follow a pattern to be more likely to perform A or B or C, although it's, it can mean we can do A, B or C, but it's more likely to perform one or another phenomena. So someone who is receive spirits of crying spirits had a tendency to receive a spirit who was always crying. And uh, the spirits uh, of mediums were able to perform apparitions, uh, have a tendency to dedicate themselves more to this kind of phenomena, but it's not completely limited to it. Uh, apportations, the transportation of an, uh, of an element from point A to point B, meaning, in the spiritual world, um, he taken a pen from my home and bring to to Juan's home right there, at his desk right now. Uh, and he looks at it, but well, this 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 pen is now mine, and, and it has my name on it. Okay, or bring something from the spiritual world, a pen that I don't know Emmanuel is using the spiritual world now, and he decides to give to Juan, and there's a spirit who can bring that. Um, that pen and bring to Jean to, to take a look at it. Naturally, that one will dematerialize very quickly because it does not belong to our physical world. Instead of my one that went to his house, may stay there because it's compatible with this environment, it's made for this environment. Uh, and then it comes with the nocturnal mediums, the ones who just work at night or in darkness, I'm sorry. To this, we have to make open a parenthesis, the sum of phenomena depend of what is being done, it requires the absence of white light because some um, energies of the spiritual world are very sensitive to white light. So in some uh, cases of, let's say, treatment, uh, lights are uh, lowered um, or use a different of kind of light that is not on white light. Uh, to not degrade the quality of the energies that come from the spiritual world. But there are those who can only perform in darkness. And you can open a question mark here, and Erasi does open a question mark here. You know, Kardec says, with more uh, education, perhaps the same mediums can perform uh, at light as well when he says, Most nocturnal mediums could produce the phenomena 
in both light and day uh, with some kind of training. But the greatest problem over here is this, once you make things dark, you open a great window of opportunity for charlatans. Now you, you open a great window of opportunity for the false mediums, for those who are there for the money to come in with all these schemes and um, fool the ignorant ones or the more uh, gullible ones, right? Um, but Kardec, but Erastus over here, make a parenthesis and says, yes, um, you need to, to reveal those charlatans. Uh, yes, I repeat, certain charlatans shall be opening and very rudely exposed so that their role as fake mediums will end. It is only a matter of time. Uh, but unfortunately, um, there you always, in any field of human activity, there will be the, in, 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 in common, the smart one, so to say, who you use the opportunity to, to make a box and they make a box or do anything that they can. And when you do things in the dark, you open the window of opportunity of those charlatans to, to produce a uh, uh, fake uh, uh, phenomena. And that put the, the credibility of the true mediums uh, at shake. It puts the credibility of the whole that doctrine at, at risk. So we need to be careful with this kind of uh, shady things. Um, and that's why Kardec says with proper training, perhaps those who can believe who can only do a dark in dark can also do um, in, in light, except again with parentheses for very special situations and where the um, spiritual energies and it is coming from the spiritual world are very sensitive to white light. In this case, we have to dim the lights or you have to change the type of light. Okay, come on, uh, questions? All right, then continue. Okay, pneumatographical, pneumatographical mediums, those obtain direct writing, a very rare phenomenon, especially easy to imitate by charlatism. Contrary to our own opinion, the spirits have insisted that we place direct writing among the phenomenon of the physical order because According to them, intelligent effects are those that a spirit produces by utilizing the elements present in the medium's brain, which is not the case with direct writing. The medium's action in this instant is entirely physical, while in the writing medium, even if completely mechanical, the brain always plays an active role. Okay, uh, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to stop because it's very important. You see the Kardec takes the care to say the spirits told us that you have to separate the pneumatography from um, from the intelligence phenomena. Pneumatography, direct writing, is not psychography. Psychography has um, the association of two petty spirits in which uh, the petty spirit of the medium cap captures the thought of the spirit and is able to write it. So this is an intelligent phenomena. This is the association of the two petty spirit working together, passing thoughts from one to another. Direct writing is a physical phenomena in which an spirit will utilize uh, ectoplasm and will you write on its own without any participation of the medium, whatever it wants to write uh, on a piece of paper inside a, a, um, a drawer that is locked and there is no paper, no, no, no ink, no pencil inside of that drawer. 
you put over there, you lock it and, and you open up, there is a message you written um, or there is a picture or whatever. This is physical phenomena. It's not considered an intelligent phenomena. Okay. And Raya also, not very common. Okay, healing. Okay, healing mediums. Those who have the ability to cure or alleviate illnesses by the imposition of hands or through prayer. This faculty is not essentially medium mediumistic because all true believers possess it whether they are mediums or not. It is frequently no more than the overexcitation of the magnetic power, which is strengthened if needed by the participation of good spirits. Thanks. Very important to make a stop here also. Who are the healing mediums? You yeah. can even call it mediums. So let's read the collections again. This faculty is not essentially mediumistic because all true believers possesses it, whatever they are mediums or not. So again, I ask, who are the so are the healers? Who are the, the individuals capable of for those healings? All true believers possesses it, whatever they are mediums or not. So in our spiritual center, who gives passes? Who gives the laying of hand? Yeah. That again is what Kardec, what leads Kardec to say, everyone is a medium. Everyone has that ability uh, of doing something. If one believes that one has a potential, that one wants, so that's what they want, of uh, providing some kind of assistance to someone else to a pass, this individual will naturally, it's a natural thing, attract the spirits who are able to help that spirit, that person who's going to receive the pass to us, and those who are wants to help us to be helpful. So in that we have been acting as a medium because by my desire of donate all the goodness that I have in me, in, in terms of energies that are mine, that I want to give to the individual during my passes, I am creating a, an association with spirits who can in reality, be the ones who give more of most of the energies through me to give that passes. Among us, the, the pass givers, everyone physically, there is one who perhaps is more, has a little more augmented capability, perhaps. Okay. But Kardec leaves very clear over here, and I repeat this faculty is not essentially mediumistic because. All true believers possesses it, whatever they are mediums or not. Okay. Now, could you make say that some of us have a more extensive ability when dealing with uh, healing phenomena? Yes. So perhaps we're gonna label that individual as a healing medium. And again, as I said, it seems like mediums have a likelihood to, to opt or being guided to work in more in one or another field. Some will be more the apparitions, the apportations, the healings, the, psych, the pneumatographies, not limiting to be only that, but to have a, a tendency to work more on this or to that, things. Again, um, someone likes more poetry, some more, some more likes more uh, technical books. Naturally, uh, one will 
gravitate more towards poetry, if that's what one likes, and one you gravitate more towards technical book, if that's what it likes more. When you walks into a bookstore, one will not look specific for a book, you probably will be looking around po uh, poetry books, if that's the one likes. And the same thing with mediums, one will gravitate more to one side or another. The difference is we as uh, eternal spirits may not even know what is our, as eternal spirit, what we are uh, better at doing again. If Mozart reincarnate with inability to use the, the, the music ability, he did not lose it. You're just not going to use it here for whatever reason. But I'm sure that you no, know, when his time is of freedom, when he can do something, he will be thinking of music. And if he goes to, a, again, to a bookstore, he will gravitate more to the, <clears throat> to the, to the era that deals with music. And probably he's going to be reading his own biography over there. Okay, so I think, I think it was important to make a separation here, these healing mediums, because that, again, is a question that comes very often. So we are all healing mediums. We are all capable of assisting and giving passes and providing as long as we have that. Number one, the more important, the want. We covered that last week. The want, the desires are the first thing. And then we create by association um, ties with spirits were able to augment our potential to help others. Okay, questions, comments? All right, let's go, developer. Developer mediums, those who have the ability to develop the writing the writing faculty and others through their influence. There is more of a magnetic effect than a mediumistic one per se, for it does not indicate the actual intervention of a spirit. In any case, it belongs to the order of physical effects. Yeah, um, I put a big question mark over here. Didn't quite understand the development as myself. And I saw that here the last time that we present this book, I had the same question mark and did not understand very well. Uh, what is in a developed medium over here? Mm -hmm. um, someone who is able, has ability to help others to develop, to develop their writing faculties. Okay, I understand that, but I don't quite get at what makes it a medium. And the I continue saying, uh, there is more of a magnetic effect than a mediumistic effect one per se. I understand that, that perhaps uh, someone has the magnetic power, just someone has a magnetic power for healings and for the thing else. One may have this magnetic power to assist other to develop to develop their writings um, uh, faculty. Is it limited to write writings? Is one thing that I question over here. I really don't know. That's one of the the talks in the book, and I see that I put a note here. The last time we started a story that I didn't understand that I still don't quite understand. Okay. 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 190. Special intellectual effects mediums, various aptitudes. He hearing mediums, those who hear spirits, very common. There are many individuals who fancy that they hear something that really only exists in their own imagination. Speaking mediums, those who speak under the influence of spirits, very common. Seeing mediums, those who see spirits while awake, the accidental and fortuitous sight of a spirit in a determined circumstance is very frequent, but the habitual or facultative seeing of spirits without any distinction is exceptional. The present condition of your physical organism opposes this aptitude. Thus, it is always prudent at first not to believe those who say they see spirits. Thanks. Okay. 
So it's not Kadex like with the, no, pretty much with the sensorium organs of the perispirit, so to say. Okay. So a hearing medium will hear with the perispiritual uh, ears, so to say. Okay. Not with the physical ears because. If we have five, 10 of us in a room, one of us has this ability and only that one will hear what has come from the spiritual world because it's the one who has have the faculty. If it was a physical phenomena, all of us would hear it because it would affect our physical ears. That's why it's called the physical phenomena. Okay, so a, a, spirit, a medium of physical phenomena who is made to produce able to produce sounds, everyone that would in the room would hear that sounds. A hearing medium will be the only one who will hear it. That's what makes it also an intelligent phenomenon. And again, very important to differentiate a hearing medium of, um, of a psychography medium, so to say. Very often a psychography medium will say, oh, the spirit told me this. If the spirit told you this and you wrote, it's not a psychography. You are hearing medium and you choose to write what you heard. The spirit say it's going to rain. You heard the spirit say it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. You are hearing medium who choose to write to those that sentence. You are, you are, a, you are a, a medium of psychography. There is an association of the two spirits in which you receive the thought of the me, of the spirit. And they re, the thought that was passed through is it's going to rain. And you will use your nervous system to guide your hand to write, it is going to, to rain. If you are an unconscious medium, you write, it's going to rain without knowing that you're writing it. If you're a conscious medium, you receive that thought and you think, or oh, the thought that I receive is uh, it's going to rain. And then you write, it's going to rain. Is, is that clear to make the differentiate of healing, of hearing and psychography? Because that's very important. Very commonly, a medium will say, I heard the spirit saying that, but very, and very commonly it's, it's getting things confused. It's not really hearing it, it's receiving the thought. Now, there are also the healing, hearing mediums, those who hear, who hear sounds, who hear voices, um, individuals who come and say, I hear the voices, the voices in my, in my head, the voice in my mind. Is that a, a um, psychiatric disease? Is it mediumship? Is it a little bit of both? That's up to the specialists to decide. Okay. okay. Then again, um, speaking mediums is uh, you'll be uh, pretty much a psychophony receive the thought and express the thought. Seeing mediums can be controversial. Um, if it's medium, then there is an interaction. If it's just a clairvoyance or second sight, it's uh, just an ability of that individual to have that open window to the spiritual world without necessarily being a um, mediumistic phenomenon. Okay. Okay. Inspirational. Uh, yeah. Okay. Inspirational mediums. Those who receive thoughts suggested by spirits, usually without being aware of it, whether for the ordinary matters of life or for great intellectual works. Special mediums 
Okay, yeah. so that's an inspirational, <clears throat> also very common, but that's what makes us all mediums. In the words of Kardec, we are all mediums in different degrees, in different levels, but we all receive inspiration from the spiritual world, right? We can all, all of us can be inspired for the good and for the bad, unfortunately. We may not ask for us only for the good, right? So as some believe that mediums only receive good thoughts, uh, unfortunately, all being mediums, you can be influenced, you can be inspired for the good and for the bad. Uh, those who have a higher degree of inspiration who can go beyond the average may be labeled a medium. Um, we, in the mediumship medium, when we uh, are works as, let's say, as dialoguers, we are pretty much acting as a inspirational mediums because you are really open, actually begging for the inspiration of the spirits to pass uh, something useful and good in our dialogues with spirits. So the part we have very, let's say, a more active, not so passive um, inspirational mediums, because we are there almost like begging, guide me, help me, uh, inspire me to, to assist this individual here now. But as Kardec was over here, it may happen in the colloquial life, things come in, or in a, in a very specific situation, um, you're going to present a very difficult topic in whatever field that you have, you have to present something, and um, you have a very, very tough crowd, and you feel a little bit intimidated by that crowd, you may receive the inspiration. And at the end of your speech, the, the end of the presentation, you say, wow, I did above average. That's, I did better than I usually do. Where does it come from? You just, all the sun to become better like that, like in a, of magic, very likely have you are inspired, especially if you prepared yourself well, if you did your best, now you, you'll be inspired to, to present your best. Don't expect that, you know, you do not prepare yourself, get over there and the spirit is going to go into rescue. Uh, usually that doesn't, doesn't work like that. But if you do your best, when the time comes, they are there to help you to use your best. Okay. 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 Prescient mediums. Those who in certain circumstances have a vague intuition of future common occurrences. Prophetic mediums, a variety of inspirational or prescient medium who receive with God's permission and with greater precision than prescient mediums, a revelation of future events of general interest and who are charged with transmitting it to others for instructive purposes. If they are true prophets, they are also false ones who take the delusions of their own imaginations to be revelations, whereas they are in fact pretenders passing themselves off as prophets out of ambition. Nonbalistic mediums. Again, I'm sorry, Tiger, let's stop here. Uh, okay. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, prescient and uh, prophetic mediums. <clears throat> as we saw, I believe, last week or two weeks ago, What happens in those things, in, 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 in this kind of phenomena, is the individual are able to notice ahead of time the consequences of a present phenomena. So let's see uh, with the tsunami in the, or anywhere a tsunami. A tsunami, tsunami usually is a consequence of an earthquake that happened in the middle of the ocean, somewhere far out, right? There was a um, movement of tectonic plate that generated a huge um, 
energy that produces a huge um, waves, but that was that happened. I don't know. Let's say three hundred miles off the coast, and it's gonna take just guessing numbers here. Okay, three days for that uh, huge wave to reach the coast. The effect, the phenomena happened now. The earthquake, the move the tectonic plate, huge uh, uh, energy, huge wave happened now. We will only see the consequence of it in three days. Let's assume that is on a piece of land where they don't have means to, to be measuring those things, right? Now they have so much technology out there that we are able to actually be prophetic and see that it's going to reach the coast of three or four days, but that's technology. It's not long and medium ship. Some individuals have the ability of being notified that this happened in the middle of the ocean, 300 miles away, and we have the consequence of this effect in three days. That is a prophetic event. That you no, know, it's something who what I'm trying to say is what Kardec explained to us is that it's, it, it's not a completely divine that is out of nowhere. No, it is the consequence of a actual fact in the present that someone who have the ability of notice, of understand the consequences ahead of time, ahead of most of us. Okay, now that could be for a physical phenomena like the tsunami, or that could be the consequence, let's say, of um, right now the, the United States uh, live in Afghanistan. Maybe somebody is right now is saying what's going to happen five years from now, what's going to happen to the little kids five years from now. They have, they have been able to perceive, to understand what's happening in, in Afghanistan, to know what that culture and everything else to say. The consequences will be A, B, and C, and be able to predict it ahead of time, to see ahead of time the consequences of a fact that's happening right now. Now, that could be a very common life, very simple things, is a presentment, or some, something that affects global and everybody else, we label that prophetic. But it's pretty much, pretty much the same mechanism, okay? Questions, comment? Elmo, um, if I might ask a question. Um, what about a, a medium who would be writing in the script, the actual uh, script of a, a former poet or a former writer and started writing in that sort of essence of the way that writer would have expressed. Is that is that physical phenomenon or just regular psychography? Seems to me that a regular psychography, let's say when uh, Givaldo writes a book of, um, what is that French author again? Voltaire? No. Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo, yeah, yeah, Victor Hugo. Uh, and um, pretty much with this, some, somewhat the style of, uh, of Victor Hugo, it is a psychography, okay? Mm -hmm. To okay. expect that, Kardec, that, that Victor Hugo would be exactly the same one that it was when he discarnate, it, it's just plain stupid, right? I mean, just by leaving behind the physical body, we change ourselves, right? Not to have this physical body as you not know, being imprisoned by this physical body and be free from it is already a, a big change. So when Vitor Hugo, you write a book through a medium, Vivaldo Pereira Franco, it will show the differentiations of Vitor Hugo as in Canada, mm -hmm. Canada mm -hmm. as well. But the style, uh, Pretty much the ideologies, that's pretty much will retain. So usually there's a psychography and uh, it is common that a, a medium will have an affinity with one or another 
um, writer, and, and that, that writer in the spiritual world will use that medium more often as, a, as the pen, so to say. But if you have a medium who only writes, who only do, thinks of that specifically writer in the spiritual world, that's quite suspicious. That's a red flag that has to be carefully analyzed. Not saying that it's possible, but it is a red flag. Thank you, thank you, Elmo. Sure. Appreciate. It. Okay, continue. Please. Okay, sonambulistic mediums, those who are assisted by spirits while in a sonambulistic trance. Ecstatic mediums, those who receive revelations from spirits while in a state of ecstasy. Many ecstatics are victims of their own imagination and of deceiving spirits who take advantage of their heightened state. There are very few who merit complete trust. Okay, thanks. Um, mm -hmm. I have to make a, I forgot to mention something important um, with the prophetic that again, Christ has already told us there shall be false prophets. Mm -hmm. um, through a physical phenomena, it's easy to notice, right? If if there was if there was an earthquake uh, in the ocean three three hundred miles away, and it's gonna happen, reach here three days or not, will you know if the guy is a true prophet or not when the wave comes in and hit the coast? All right, so the guy who, who was. Uh, uh, there was a true prophetic event, or another one is a charlatan who is trying to scare the people for whatever, whatever reason and make up that story. And three days later, no big wave comes through and we realize that the guy was trying to, to fool us. But for the other kinds of uh, prophetic things, it's more complicated to, to prophesize the end of the world and the, of the world now the year 2021 is too late. Let's say the year 2051. The world's going to end at 2051. Be prepared, be careful. Come to my temple. Uh, here's where salvation is for all of you who come in. You know, naturally, uh, give me 10% of your salary because um, that's what God told me that you guys have to do. Red flag. Is the world going to end in 2051? I don't know, but I doubt. And I, I'm not going to follow this guy. I'm not going to give him 10% of my salary. So it's highly suspicious. That will be such uh, uh, false prophets. They are a predator of uh, simple, weak, ignorant minds. They are out there. We need to be very careful. And amongst that, a lot of psychographies out there, a lot of books being psychography by, by individuals who label themselves uh, uh, spiritists, um, mediums of, um, of psychography, writing books over there. Is it true psychography? Questionable. Is it um, true psychography? Indeed it is, but it deserves to be published. Some that you read, definitely not. Okay, so again, it comes to us educating ourselves and not become a victim of uh, those charlatans. Um, and then that comes to the more um, eloquent, more abstract type of mediumships. Uh, the sonambulism um, is pretty much an out of the body kind of phenomena, you no know, a medium of sonambulism is, is a medium where those experiences um, in out of body events, okay, goes out there and is able to tell us a lot, tells us what's happening in the spiritual world, that is able to tell us, so let's say, in a mediumship meeting, you know, oh, this spirit who is talking to, uh, talking to you right now is um, dressed as in a military, he has presents a wound on his leg, 
is extremely traumatized by all the the noises of explosions around him. He's able to relate things to us in a solambulic state. He's able to go in the spiritual world and um, live the reality that that spirit is living at that moment. And ecstasy is a very um, eloquent, is a very high level of uh, meditation in the individuals goes um, into very, uh, how is it even hard to say? Even hard to say, but in a very high level of emotional, sentimental state. It's, it's like when the, in the Mount Tabor, when the disciples went with Jesus the top of the mountain and then and they met Elias over there and that they were in that ecstatic state in such a high level that they thought that they had the rich paradise and they actually asked Jesus, can, can we just stay here? Do we really have to go back? This is great, I don't wanna go back. And Jesus told them, not only we have to go back, but don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. That is a kind of, um, of trance that some people reach. Um, I think all of us may have one or another type, type in our life that reach such a, a high level of, of, of trends. Bakadek um, give a warning that very often we are full of ourselves and we think that we reach ecstasy and in reality. It just we are three steps above what we we usually live and ecstasy ought to be to go like a hundred step above what we usually live is something that really transcends us and it's really high level stuff that most of us um, will have for happen experience once uh, or not in our lives. Um, so we have to be very careful of what we call ecstasy over here. But some individuals um, we receive revelations on that state when they are all the way up there. And of course, that would be something of good. In that state of trans, you're not gonna receive false messages, will be something real, but extremely, extremely rare. And if somebody comes to you have saying that they have a, a state of ecstasy every week, again, big red flag. Okay. okay. Time's up. Al. Oh, three minutes. So, yeah. All right. We will continue next week. Uh, next week, um, Jean's not going to be here. He's deserving vacation. Hopefully, you have fun. Enjoy it. Enjoy. Thank you. Make your final prayers, please. Okay. Okay, I'll finish. To our teacher, our mentor, our Christ, our spiritual benefactors who have contributed here in our meeting tonight with a heart full of gratitude. We are grateful and thank you for the opportunity of being here again, continuing our studies in mediumship in the spirit book. May we take all that we've learned here tonight, continue throughout the week at home, through studies and through prayers. We ask as we continue throughout the week, keep ourselves with thoughts of goodness strength and courage to all our brothers and sisters that are still going through difficulties. May we continue with their prayers, asking our Lord to be with them, guide them and assist them. We ask for all that are in need, dear Father, for guidance and assistance. May you bless our Spiritist Group of New York our meetings, our teachers, our brothers and sisters that join us as they did tonight. With gratitude in our hearts, we thank you. 
And with that in mind, dear Father, we ask permission to close our meeting tonight. So be it.